Hi, I just wanted to share a few um, quick points and then so, some thoughts and, and um, things related to the needs section of the grant proposal. So again, I, I just kind of hope this is, is helpful. All of these videos are obviously just, um, you know, um, optional and just there if, if, if it's helpful. Um, one of the things I want to mention more generally about the class is that I, I tend to grade the first few weeks fairly liberally. Um, I, I mean, I, I tend to give the majority of points just because I know students are still thinking through a project idea, sort of wrestling with things, and that we won't really, a lot will be changed and revised as you get feedback from classmates and and myself, and then move a little bit further forward in the um, proposal writing stage. So it is, in some sense, I, I understand like the first few weeks are just sort of, of getting used to things and, and thinking through them. The other issue, though, I would throw out is that um, you don't want to get too far behind that if you don't have a good project idea and um, start, then things will tend to snowball over time because it, it makes it difficult to do needs if you don't have a specific area and population in mind. Um, not doing need makes it nearly impossible to really do the goals and objectives. Um, the pieces sort of fit together. So it is it is important that to kind of take the feedback, um, think through the issues and then make revisions and kind of move forward. Um, and then really like the way the class is set up too, the, the big chunk of the grade really ends up in the um, final um, proposal, the final product that you write. So that's really where a lot of the bulk of the points and things like that. So, um, so and, and to have a decent proposal, it's really essential that you work through each week that you're um, reading things and, and reading your classmates' um, work and assignments will really help you guys think through things for your own project and proposal. So with needs, what I want to say is that this is, I the book is essential and you should, should read the chapter. I'm not trying to replicate that information. That's really important. I would say in the chapter, they, they talk about the, you know, target population. But I wish they would define a little bit more clearly that along with that, what you want to have is a clear indication of the um, target area as well. Um, and now again, this might vary if you're doing research, for example, you might have a more broad or general, you might be focused more on that topic or issue than you are a specific area. But for example, if you're, if you're looking at something like poverty, um, or you know certain populations and poverty rates and things like that, you you need a really well defined area, and then that's essential because um, you want to convey to the potential funder that you have a really clear understanding of um, the you know of that population and that area, and along with that too, for example, is um, for things to start making sense and coming together. So, for example, when you do goals and objectives. Um, let's say you're you're working on a mentor pro program for African American students. Well, you know, in Muncie Community Schools, well, you can look up very easily on the Department of Education website to see how many uh, African American students and student demographics more generally there, you know, for, for example, like Muncie, Muncie Central High School. And if you know there are 300 uh, African American students there, then then it would make sense that you know, if you, if you're targeting for the mentor program, like 25 to 50, like it, it would kind of make sense. And you know that, that Central has a number of students there who could use mentoring um, support and things like that. So the data sources that come up in your needs section will help you inform and write your goals and objectives later. And those should make kind of a cohesive um, connection there. Um, so the data sources should be, you know, as, as much as possible, tailored to your target population and your target area. Um, you know, if you're talking about people in poverty and you have a lot of sources about people in poverty more generally, like that, that doesn't really help the grant reviewer. They, they really wanna know sort of about the area you're looking at and the, the population that you've targeted um, um, for funding. Uh, the balance, the, the challenging balance with writing a needs section is that you want to show really significant need. But on the other hand, it's like you have to show capacity, you have to kind of give the funding agency a sense that you can deal with the issue. So if it, if it feels too overwhelming, 
that's that's not really helpful too. So you kind of you kind of want to think about that balance. And in the needs section, you can still begin to work on capacity. So if you're working with a nonprofit or um, some sort of organization, you can show that you have the capacity to to deal with this project and um, you know and address this issue. So it's compelling need, but also in the back of your mind, just keep that idea of capacity. Um, as well. Definitely do research. Um, this is a section where you should begin to have citations. You should begin to build your works cited page. That'll go in the appendix, so that'll go at the end of the proposal. But you should have a couple of citations um, in that section. Um, that That's really important. And again, just to make sure you do your research. And if you're having trouble finding data sources, please just reach out to me or contact me. Um, there's plenty of, of data sources for the state and at the national level. Um, that you can access um, for each each um, issue. So I hope this is helpful and um, I, I really appreciate any questions you have. And again, I, I would say to make sure you do the reading and um, use the book as, as a source.